Hi everyone, my name is Diabutor, and today I'm going to show you how to get the Mimic tier as quickly and easily as possible. I'll also give you a quick walkthrough of how to bring it up to plus 10 as quickly as possible. In order to get the Mimic tier, we're going to need to kill a few enemies, the most important one being General Radon. This walkthrough will show you all the things that I like to do to set up for the Radon fight, as well as how to actually get to the Mimic tier. To start off, we're going to grab a couple items up in Stormhill. So first, I like to start by the Warmaster Shack and head to the northeast to get the Golden Vow Ash of War from killing this knight on this horse up here. You see I'm using a Lance with Impaling Thrust, which makes it really easy to hit him because of its range, and it also makes it really easy to Poise Break him, which makes him fall off the horse, as you're about to see in a second. You can also get the Lance in this spot right here, in addition to the Golden Vow Ash of War, and you can buy Impaling Thrust from Warmaster Bernal at the Warmaster Shack. On death, the knight drops the Golden Vow Ash of War, so make sure you pick it up. You can grab the lance on top of this ruin over here. If you look, you'll see in the corner, there's a corpse over there with an item on it. That's the lance, so you can just jump down from the cliff and grab that. I'm also going to head over to this little plateau on the west side over here, where we're going to grab the Strength Knot Crystal Tear, which goes in our Wondrous Physic. I grabbed the strength tier because we're going to be using a great shield later on. That shield has a 20 strength requirement, and so having the strength tier makes it so that any class can use it even if you haven't put any points into strength. I already had it, but it would be in that basin that I just hit with the lance there. We're also going to need four stone sword keys for this guide, so I headed over to the Stormhill Shack to the west and grabbed the stone sword key here. While I was in the area, I also decided to grab a bunch of smoldering butterflies, which we're going to use to craft fire pots, because there's a couple enemies that we're going to kill that are weak to fire, and so having these fire pots will make it a lot easier. So right next to where we grab the Golden Vow Ash of War, there's this little patch of fire that has eight smoldering butterflies and these two magma slugs next to it. You can use this spot to farm smoldering butterflies if you rest at the Warmaster Shack, then run up here, grab the butterflies, and kill the two slugs, then you can fast travel back to the Warmaster's Shack, and when you head back over here, the butterflies will have respawned, so you can just grab more of them. So you get eight of them at a time, and it's pretty fast to get a whole ton of smoldering butterflies at the beginning of the game. I believe the slugs also have a chance of dropping smoldering butterflies, so killing them might give you an extra one or two of them. After that, in order to actually craft fire pots, we're going to need to grab cracked pots and the crafting kit from Kale over at the Church of L.A. So make sure you purchase these from him. He sells three cracked pots, and he sells the crafting kit, which enables you to use the item crafting menu in the pause menu. In total, this will cost you 1,200 runes. And then the final ingredient for fire pots is mushrooms, which we're going to grab over at the Ag Hill Lake South side of Grace. If you start over at the first step, you can either follow the road through Limgrave to get here, or... You can head east, there's a little cliff that you'll be able to drop down here, and then you just follow the lake. You'll see this big ruins, this is called the Seaside Ruins. To the east of that, there's this little part of the lake that juts out, and just next to it is the Site of Grace. So you see here, there's that little bit of the lake, there's a giant crab there, and then just to the southeast of that, there's this little platform rock thing here that has a Site of Grace on it. Right next to the Site of Grace is a mushroom, so you can grab the mushroom, sit down at the Grace, and it respawns and then grab the mushroom again, and that's how you can farm infinite mushrooms. In my opinion, it's best to stock up on a whole ton of mushrooms and butterflies at once, just so you don't have to keep coming back here. But once you have those ingredients and the cracked pots, you can craft fire pots from your crafting menu, you can equip them on your quick item bar, and then you just tap X while you have it selected to throw fire pots. After that, we're going to head over to the Gatefront Ruins, where we're going to make sure we grab the Whetstone Knife. There's a couple Ashes of War that we're going to be using for this guide, and so we need to make sure we have the Whetstone Knife so that we can put them on our weapons. In the Gatefront Ruins, you saw there was a cellar, it's not far from where the map is, and then you just go down, open the door, and in the chest you grab the Storm Stomp Ash of War, which is a nice one to have, and it'll also give you the Whetstone Knife. I didn't get it because I already had it in my inventory. But this allows us to put Ashes of War on our weapons at Sites of Grace, so if you rest at a Site of Grace, go to the Ashes of War menu, you can choose your weapon, and then you can put an Ash of War on it. You can also get Hugh at the Round Table Hold to put Ashes of War on your weapons for you, but it's better to make sure you have this so that you can do it on your own instead of going back there every time. Up next, we're going to head over to the Third Church of Merica on the east side of Limgrave. 
This is located just north of the Mistwood, so from the gate front, if you just follow the road to the east, head over the bridge, make a left, and follow the road north, that'll take you to the Mistwood outskirts set of grace, and then just north of that is the Third Church America. In the Third Church America, we're going to come to this basin over here, where we grab the Flask of Wondrous Physic and a Crystal Tear for it. You only get one use of the Flask of Wondrous Physic, but it refills every time you die or rest at a Site of Grace. At a Site of Grace, you can mix your Wondrous Physic and put two Crystal Tears in it, each of which gives you a variety of different buffs. The Crystal Tears are not consumed, so you can reuse them as much as you want. We're also going to come over to the Statue of America and grab this Sacred Tear, which can be used to upgrade our flasks and make them heal us more. After that, we're going to head south from the Third Church of America over to Fort Height. If you haven't grabbed the map from the Mistwood yet, that's where it is, right next to the road there. You'll be able to see it if you haven't picked it up yet. You can see it in the Fog of War uh, on your map screen when you get close to this area. All the way at the south end of the Mistwood is Fort Height. To the west of it, there's a Site of Grace. Make sure you grab it because we're going to have to come back here later. There's a few important items to grab up here, so the very first one is located just outside of the fort itself. It's the golden seed you can grab by that phantom tree right there, so make sure you grab that to upgrade your flasks. Inside the fort, I didn't grab it, but there's a room to my right over here, and that has a crafting recipe for blood grease in it, so make sure you grab that. And all the way at the top of the fort, if you head up this ladder, there's a chest that contains the first half of the Dectus Medallion, which we're gonna need. We're going to use this to get up to the Altus Plateau and start the Radon Festival so that we can actually fight General Radon. Now we're going to head south of Limgrave to the Weeping Peninsula, where there's a few more really important items we need to grab. Since I already grabbed it earlier, I'm going to start at the Ag Hill Lake south side of Grace, but in case you haven't grabbed it, you can just follow the road through Limgrave after the bridge is head south, and it'll take you to the Ag Hill Lake south side of Grace, and then south of that is the Bridge of Sacrifice. On the Bridge of Sacrifice is a big-ass ballista that's going to shoot at you. Usually I get its attention and then I run behind this tower and it hits the tower and then it has a long reload time so you can run past it. But that time it just shot right over my head. Either way, run past it. And then on the bridge there's a couple smithing stone ones as well as a stone sword key which like I said we're going to need four of them so it's good to grab that. Make sure you grab the Sight of Grace that's right next to the bridge and then we're going to head south. In this carriage there's the Morning Star which is a nice hammer that has bleed build up. We're going to want that for an enemy we're about to fight. And there's also a smithing stone too here, which we're going to need to upgrade our weapons later. Follow the road a little bit further and you'll come to the Castle Morn Rampart side of Grace. We're going to head south of there in just a second. But first we're going to talk to this merchant. He sells infinite cookeries, which are like throwing knives. They're slower, but they do more damage and they also do bleed buildup. And they have a lot of uses, though we're not going to use them in this guide. He also sells three smithing stone ones and one smithing stone two, which we're going to use to upgrade our weapons. He sells a stone sword key, which you can buy, and he sells one cracked pot, which you should absolutely pick up. In addition to that, he also has a couple weapons, including a crossbow and the bastard sword. Anyway, so we're going to head south from here. First, you're going to grab the map that's on this marker right over here. You can't really see him here right now, but there's a giant golem over there that shoots great arrows at you, so be careful of him. And there's also a golden seed here that we're going to grab. After that, we're going to follow the road to the northwest from the Castle Morn Rampart. So if you see here, there's a fork in the road, so take the left path. That takes you to a little set of grace over here by a pond that's surrounded by a few dogs. And then we're going to head over to the bridge and take a little shortcut to get up on top of the plateau that's above us right now. So run across the bridge. There's a demi-human chief there, but you can run past it really easily. And then here's a spirit stream, so if you're on torrent, you can jump down into it and land without taking fall damage. And then if you jump, you see that ledge up there on the ruins? That's what we're going to. So you can jump up. And it takes you high enough that you can get on top of it. You can also do a double jump if you need the extra distance. And then there's a little path up here, and we're going to follow this up and around. And this takes us to the Ailing Village. In the Ailing Village, there's a church called the Caillou Baptismal Church. And here, there's not only a spell that was on my left. I didn't grab it, but there is a spell here. There's also a sacred tear by the statue that we're going to grab to upgrade our flasks. Then I headed back down, and I went across the bridge and kept heading west. If you go west and then follow the road up to the north, there's another church all the way at the north end of the peninsula called the Church of Pilgrimage, and inside this church, there's another sacred tier. So if you look at the map, you'll see there's a road leading up to the church. You just come across the bridge and head north. After this, there's another church that we're going to head to over on the west end of the Weeping Peninsula. You'll be able to see the outline of the building on the map, so you can put a waypoint there, and it's just a straight shot from the Church of Pilgrimage over to the fourth church. 
Along the way, you might want to check out the cellar and the Tomb's Road Ruins where you can get the Winged Angel Scythe, which is a unique scythe that has a cool Ash of War. And then in the fourth church, there's a Sacred Tear. I didn't show it in this guide, but you see to the south, there's a site of grace there with a building. That's the isolated merchant's shack. There's a merchant there that sells a couple weapons and a few smithing stones that you should pick up. But now that we've grabbed those sacred tears, we're going to head back to the Church of Pilgrimage, and we're going to head directly south to the Minor Ur Tree. Along the path here, there's a few guardians that you're probably going to aggro if you run past them. They're really easy to fight. Uh, they're weak to fire, so if you have fire pots, that's good against them. Speaking of which, we're going to fight an Erdtree avatar here. These guys are weak to strike damage, which is why we picked up the Morningstar, and they're also weak to fire damage. So if you have fire pots, those are really effective against this guy. This guy's attacks are really slow and easy to dodge. As long as you don't panic roll, you shouldn't have any trouble avoiding getting hit by this guy. But if you're having a hard time, it's absolutely an option to just get on Torrent and then run around it while you throw fire pots at it, because it's super weak to fire. I didn't use them here because I wanted to show how to fight it in melee, but fire pots are super strong against it. You'll notice I play it pretty safe, and I only do one, maybe two hits in between its attacks. So I do one hit, and then I get prepared to dodge. If you keep spamming the attack button, then you're going to get hit a lot, and that's how you die. So only do one maybe two attacks at a time, and then get ready to dodge whatever it does next. When it does its butt slam, you see it jumps up in the air, and then it kind of floats for a second, and then comes back down. So there's a delay on when you need to dodge that. You can't just dodge as soon as it reaches the peak. You have to give it a couple frames when it starts falling kind of slowly. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but if you practice these dodges, they're really easy and really consistent. Here it's about to do an attack called Golden Land, so it holds its staff upside down, slams it into the ground, which can hit you, then there's an explosion, which can hit you, so you need to dodge backwards twice to get away from both the slam and the explosion. And then it spawns a bunch of golden bullets, and they'll shoot at you after a second. So to dodge those bullets, you need to run away into the side of it. That way, the bullets won't hit you, because they're going to land behind you, because you're running to the side. And the uh, avatar can't hit you because you're running away from the avatar. So you see here, I make sure my way is clear, and then I just run in a semicircle around the avatar, kind of. Here's another atomic ash drop that it does. So it jumps up in the air, floats, and then you dodge. So you see here in slow motion. So it didn't attack. I hit it twice so that I can have time to react if it does an attack like this one. Then it jumps up in the air floats for a second, and then it starts slowly coming down, and then it comes down. You saw there were a few frames that it moved slowly down, and then it like shoots downwards. So when it's slowly moving downwards, that's when you need to dodge. And you saw afterwards, I was able to hit it with a charged R2, because it has a long recovery time afterwards. So you see here, I do a charged R2. That recovery period that the avatar has is called a punish window. So you can use a punish window to do longer animations like, you know, heavier attacks, or... Um, you know, even if, like, if I was at lower health, instead of attacking it there, I could have healed instead. So if you're ever having trouble with a boss, just try to dodge its attacks and wait for a punish window where it has a long recovery period. And you can use that to take some pressure off yourself or get some extra damage in. And so that's pretty much all you really need to know about fighting this thing. Just wait until it attacks and then dodge. You just can't spam the attack button and you'll be fine. And that applies to every boss, every enemy in the game. If you stand there and you just mash the attack button, if you try to spam Ashes of War or spells and stuff, you're going to run out of stamina, or it's going to attack you while you're in the middle of an animation so you can't dodge. So this game really wants you to be deliberate and patient in your actions. And you see here, I got it to low health and then I stopped attacking because I just want to show you, if you're having a hard time fighting any given boss, the best thing you can do is just not attack it. Run away from it. Figure out what its attacks look like and, you know, when it does, which attacks, what combos it does, and just learn how to dodge all of its moves. And that makes any boss way better to fight. But anyway, so on death, this thing drops two Crystal Tears. So the first is the Crimson Burst Crystal Tear, which gives you, I think, 7 health per second health regen when you put it in your Wondrous Physic, and that lasts for 3 minutes. It also drops the Opaline Bubble Tear, so this gives you one hit that gets 90% less damage. It puts like a bubble around you, and if you get hit, that bubble pops. Don't use the Opaline Bubble Tear. This thing is worthless. It's one hit, and then it's uh, it's like a wasted spot in your physic. Don't use it. But the Crimson Burst here is really good, and that's why we killed the Avatar. 
So now we're done with the Weeping Peninsula, so we're going to head back up to Storm Hill, and east of the War Master Shack across the bridge, we're going to go to Summon Water Village. Make sure you have at least one Stone Sword key for this part, because you're going to need it. We're coming here to go into the cellar and grab a talisman that's going to help us out. This particular cellar requires one Stone Sword key to open, so that's why we need it. Once you head down inside, there's a bunch of turtles in here, and they respawn if you kill them. So this is a good place to farm turtle neck meat if you need it. And then on the inside door, open up the chest, and we're going to grab the green turtle talisman, which increases our stamina regen. Now we're going to head back over to the Mistwood on the east side of Limgrave. So here you see I went to the Mistwood outskirts side of Grace. Right next to the Erd tree on the map, you'll notice that there's this circular structure, so that's where we're going. That's an elevator that's going to take us underground to a place called the Schiefer River. So if you run through the Mistwood, be careful because there's a bunch of giant bears here. You can outrun them on Torrent pretty easily, but they're also really strong, so be careful of them. Inside the little building, there's an elevator. I had already sent it down, so I just fast traveled underground, but you'll have an elevator that you can ride down there. Once we're in the Schiefer River, I'm just going to run through it. There's obviously a whole bunch of loot and cool stuff to check out here, so you're going to want to explore it. But I just run through it on Torrent because I didn't need any of this stuff for this guide. Once you get past the giant crab, which you can avoid fighting if you stay on the right side of that little stream there, you'll find the Schiefer Riverbank site of Grace. And from here, we're going to head to the northeast to the Below the Well site of Grace, all the way at the end of the Schiefer River. So you're not going to be able to see this on the map when you get here, but you'll see right to the east... There's this little pillar over here with a corpse on it, and that corpse has the map for the Schiefer River. Midway through the river, there's another site of grace called the Worshipper's Woods. Make sure you grab this, because we're going to come back here later, and it's going to save us a little bit of time if we already have that grace. You'll see there's this last uh, aqueduct structure on the map, and it's right underneath it. On the northwest side of the Worshipper's Woods, you'll see there's this structure over here with these buttresses, and there's an item on that pillar over there. That's another stone sword key, which we're going to grab. And obviously, there's also a golden seed here, so make sure you grab that. So, you can jump up on top of this with Torrent. You can also do it on foot, but it's a lot easier if you have Torrent. And then just carefully come around the edge here, and you can grab that stone sword key. At the very end of the Worshipper's Woods, there's these two snipers that'll shoot enchanted arrows at you, so be careful, because they get really good tracking, like they home in on you, uh, and they do a ton of damage, so be careful of them. Make sure you grab the Set of Grace, and you can rest at it to lose their aggro. And then you'll see this elevator over here. We can't use it until we activate it with two Stone Sword keys, so make sure you have the two Stone Sword keys for this. And then you can ride the elevator up. It's pretty long, so I'm going to skip it. And that takes us up to the Deep Shifra Well in Caleb. This area is a little canyon that only has two ways to go, so we're going to head northwest. You're going to see these golems here. They shoot magic arrows at you, but they're pretty easy to dodge. Underneath this first golem, there's a spiked palisade shield, so that's what we came here for. So the Spiked Palisade Shield requires 20 strength to wield, like I mentioned earlier, so make sure you can meet that requirement. You'll see if you two-hand it, right? So you can two-hand it. If it's in your right hand, you press Y or Triangle, and then you hit R1 or R2, and that'll two-hand whatever weapon is in your right hand. And you can also do that with whatever's in your left hand. So if you hold down Triangle and you hit L1, then that'll two-hand your left-hand weapon. But in our case, I have the shield in my right hand, so I'm going to two-hand my right-hand weapon. Two-handing a weapon increases your effective strength by 50%. So if you don't have 20 strength, as long as you have at least 14 strength, you can two-hand it, and that'll allow you to wield it, even though you don't technically meet the strength requirement. Now we're done with the Limgrave area, so we're going to head over to Kaelid to grab a couple items there. We need to head to a place called Fort Faroff to grab the second half of the Dectus Medallion. So from the Third Church of Merica, head north and there's this little pond behind it, and that has a teleporter that'll take us up to the Dragon Barrel and put us really close to Fort Faroff. The teleporter takes us to the Bestial Sanctum on the north end of the Dragon Barrel. So you can go inside, the doors will be closed when you get here, but you can just open them up and walk in, and there's a set of grace you should grab. You can talk to the guy here, Garank, but he's not relevant to this guide, so I didn't do that. So we're all the way over here, on the northeast end of Kaelid. This is a pretty high level area, so make sure you're careful around here, because the enemies here will do a ton of damage to you. But from the Bestial Sanctum, we're going to follow the road to the south. We're going to cross this really big bridge. There's a dragon on top of it, but we can just run past it before it attacks us, so that's not a problem. And there's a set of grace right next to it that we'll grab too. 
And then just south of the bridge, there's the Minor Erd Tree, and we're gonna go behind that and take a Spirit Spring up a cliff that'll take us right to Fort Faroth. Guarding the stairs to the Bestial Sanctum is this Black Blade Kindred. You can avoid aggroing it if you just go on the side here like this. And then it's a straight shot down to the bridge, so make sure you grab the Golden Seed that we just passed by. There's a Sight of Grace here on the left side of the bridge, make sure you grab that in case you die. And then here's the dragon. You can just run past him. He probably won't hit you. And if he does hit you, then you just respawn at the grace and run past him again. I grabbed these Fulgur Blooms here because we're going to use them to craft lightning pots later on. But I actually didn't end up getting much use out of them, so uh, you don't need to worry too much about them. And then behind the tree, you saw there's a Spirit Spring. Jump up it, that takes you to this cliff. If you need runes, that giant dragon there, Grail, is a great way to farm runes. And I have a video about that, so make sure you check that out. Once you head inside of Fort Faroth, there's a bunch of bats down here on this lower level. You can just sprint past all of them before they have a chance to attack you and climb up the ladder. Again, if they do hit you, there's a side of grace right outside, so it's not a huge deal. And they can't follow you up the ladder, so once you're a little ways up that, you're safe. Anyway, so at the top of this ladder, there's another chest. And we're going to open this chest up, and inside of it is the second half of the Dectus Medallion. With the completed medallion, we can head up to the Altus Plateau using the Grand Lift of Dectus at the north end of Liurnia of the Lakes. And there, we're going to grab a couple items, and that also triggers the Radon Festival so we can fight Radon. Before I leave Fort Faroth, though, we're going to grab another talisman that's over here. So, you'll see, once we go down onto this lower area here, there's going to be a bunch of enemies that spawn in. You're going to want to go over to that hole over there that has the ladder, so it's the far hole. So you can just jump down, and then, if you're quick, they don't have enough time to spawn in and attack you. They are just a bunch of soldiers, but still, they're high level, so they'll uh, do a lot of damage to you if they hit you. So drop down. There's a golden rune over here. Dodge the rat. Grab the golden rune. And then, you're gonna see there's this jump here, so jump across this. The soldiers shouldn't be able to follow you across this unless you try real hard to make them do it. Around the corner here, there's more giant rats. So what I did was I jumped back across, and then... The smaller rat fell down into the lower level. I also used uh, Shield Bash to knock this guy off. So the smaller rat fell down, and the giant one ended up on this side with me, but it's probably not going to be able to get back across. So I just ran past it and jumped across to this side. And then once you drop down into this hole here, we're going to grab this legendary talisman, Radagon's Sword Seal, which increases all of our physical stats, so that's Vigor, Endurance, Strength, and Dexterity. It increases them by 5 points. It also reduces your damage resistance, but you get defense from increasing your stats, and that usually makes up for it. We're done with Kaelid for now, so we're going to head up to Liurnia of the Lakes for the next few parts of this. There are two ways to get to Liurnia. So starting from the Stormhill Shack, you can either take this path into Stormvale Castle. There are two bosses in Stormvale, so the first one that we're going to encounter is Margit the Fell Omen, who you can fight on this bridge here. He can be pretty tough, but I have a guide about how to beat him easily if you're having trouble with him. You can't get into Stormvale until you kill Margit, so you have to kill Margit to get into Stormvale. Then, once you're inside Stormvale, you make your way through and you fight Godric the Grafted in this courtyard over here. In my opinion, Godric is a much easier boss than Margit, so I don't have a guide about him yet, but I'll probably make one soon. But after you beat Godric, you head through his throne room, and it has a rear entrance that takes you out to the lake-facing cliffs in Liurnia. Now, you probably should go through Stormvale because there's a lot of useful stuff there, but in the event that you don't want to have to deal with Margit and Godric, there's an alternative path you can take, so instead you follow the road north to this bridge. Now, the bridge is out, as you can see on the map, but there is a semi-secret path on the left side here that you can head up, which brings you around Stormvale to Liurnia. So that's what we're going to do. So here's the end of that first part of the bridge. You come down onto this little path here. There's an Ash of War Scarab. I believe it drops the Stormwall Ash of War, which is a parrying Ash of War for your shield. But there's this little hidden path on the side, and you follow this, and it takes you over here to the lake-facing cliff. There's a few things we need to do here in Liurnia. So the first thing we're going to do is grab the map so that we have an idea of where we are and where we're going. You can follow the road west from the lake-facing cliffs, and that'll take you down into Liurnia itself. But before we do that, we're going to stop over here by the Church of Irith and grab another Sacred Tear to upgrade our flasks. You can talk to this NPC Thops, but he's not relevant to this guide, so I didn't bother talking to him. After that, just keep following the road north, and you'll come to the set of graves down here. If you didn't talk to the Isolated Merchant and the Weeping Peninsula, then you should definitely talk to this one. He sells the Lantern, which isn't as bright as a torch, but it doesn't take up a slot in your inventory, so you can use both of your hands while still having a light source available. 
He also sells a bunch of smithing stones, so make sure you pick those up because we're going to want to upgrade our weapons. And there's a couple other weapons and a crafting book that you can buy too. After that, we're going to follow the submerged road to the north and we're going to grab the map over here. So the map is guarded by a bunch of these Wraith Caller guys. I like to go up to them and lead them away from it because if you just try to grab the map while they're still next to it, then they can swarm you and knock you off the horse and you'll probably die. And then just keep following the road a bit further north and you'll come to this side of grace over here by the Laskar Ruins. Here, I got hit by one of their projectiles that they fired before I rested at the Grace. So the enemies despawned and lost their aggro on me, but the projectile was still homing in on me, and so that's what hit me there, and so that was kind of weird. The map we just grabbed reveals the east side of the Irnia, but there's still the whole central and west sections of it, so keep that in mind. Right now, I want to get over to the Academy Gate Town as fast as possible, so that we can grab the map for the central part of the Irnia. So there's two options. You can either follow the road north and just head straight up there, You'll be able to see it on your map pretty soon. Or, there's a teleporter in the Laskar Ruins that'll take us straight to Ray of the Karia. So I just want to say real quick, this enemy right here, this Revenant, it'll kick your ass. So, you know, make sure you're fast in grabbing the teleporter before it murders you. So the teleporter takes us to the south gate of Ray of the Karia. We need to find the Academy Glintstone Key to be able to get inside Ray of the Karia. But we're going to worry about that in a minute, because first I want to grab the map. The map is located to the southeast of where that teleporter took us. You'll probably be able to see it on your undiscovered part of the map from the South Academy Gate, but I'm going to show you where it is anyway. So first, if we head through the Gate Town, we're going to grab this Smithing Stone 3 over here. Make sure you grab this because we're going to use it to upgrade our weapons. And then if you head southeast of the Gate Town, there's a Golden Seed, so make sure you grab that. And then you can just head straight through the town and over to the map marker. There's also a Sight of Grace over here. So at this point, you should be able to see all but the very western end of Liurnia from here. So that was the Raylakaria Academy. There's this whole section of land on the west side over there that you're not going to be able to see yet. And we'll go get the map for that section in a little bit, but first I want to go into the Raylakaria Academy. So if you try to go through the door, you won't be able to, and you'll see that there's this meeting place map that points you somewhere. So that's over to the west side over here in this rock formation, so that's where we're going to go to. We're going to take a shortcut to get down here, so if you come over to this railing here, you see that big rock down there? If you jump over the railing and land on the rock, you can do a double jump to get some extra distance. Uh, you don't take any fall damage, so that's the quickest way to get down here. In that gazebo over there, there's a couple smithing stone twos, so you should grab those. And there's a graveyard back there that has a bunch of golden runes in it, so make sure you grab those too. As you approach this island, you'll notice that it's guarded by a sleeping dragon. You can fight it if you want, but you don't have to. Instead, I came over around the backside over here, and if you crouch walk up, then on this sorcerer's corpse, that's where the key would be. So you can just grab the key and then fast travel back over to the gate, and you can head inside Rayu Lucaria. When I go into Rayu Lucaria, I'm going to use it as a shortcut to go all the way to the north end of Liurnia. And before I do that, there's two more things we got to do. So there's a gazebo you'll see on the map over here. There's also a second one hidden in the trees. And then we're going to mark another point over here. So you see these rocks that are facing up and to the left? If you go to the tip of one of them and go about halfway between the two, you put a waypoint there and there's an item over here that we're going to grab. We're going to head over to these gazebos using this shortcut again. You could also go from the Academy Gate Town if you want. Here you saw I didn't jump quite far enough so I took a bit of damage, but I didn't die from it. First I'm going to head over to the gazebo that was hidden in the trees. So as you approach it, there's a bunch of Albanarics patrolling the woods, so be careful. And you'll see there's a bunch of Miranda flowers outside, but they're pretty much harmless. So there's three Smithing Stone 3s inside that gazebo. And then we're going to head over to that waypoint that we placed in between the two rocks. So there's multiple groups of Miranda flowers. You're looking for the one that's closer to the south. So that's this one over here. It's pretty much right on top of where we put the marker. Next to this giant Miranda flower, there's another set of three smithing stone threes. So make sure you grab those. And finally, I'm going to head over to the western gazebo, and we're going to take this teleporter all the way over to the west end of Liernia. That teleporter actually drops us right next to the west Liernia map. So make sure you grab this while you're over here. And you'll see we traveled a pretty significant distance, so that's a really good shortcut that I like to use. And then just south of this, there's a site of grace that you can grab, which you're going to want to do because we're going to come back here later. 
Finally, the last thing that we're going to do in the southern part of Liurnia, at least for now, is we're going to head over to the Boil Prawn Shack. From the Laskar Ruins, if you look to the northwest, you'll see that there's a gazebo with an icon for a telescope on it. Just to the northwest of that, there's a little ruin, and then there's a little building that you can see. So that's this building right here. You'll be able to see the little square outline that it has on the map. So that's the Boil Prawn Shack, it's what we're going to. And then this is just to give you a general idea of the direction that that uh, gazebo is in. But yeah, so it's pretty much just a straight shot from the northwest of the gazebo. And then to the southwest of the Boil Prawn Shack, there's this little island. On this island is a bunch of albinarics that can do a good amount of damage, so be careful of them. But there's a basin over here, and this basin has the Dexterity Knot Crystal Tear in it. So you can put that in your Wondrous Physic for an extra 10 points of Dexterity. And the reason why we grabbed it is because we're going to be using a weapon later on that requires 20 dex. And so if you can't meet that requirement, the dex crystal tier can help you do that. So I went inside the south gate to Ray of the Karia, And first, I just want to point out, so that seal that's floating there is where we came out of after taking the gate. It skipped that entire bridge that's there, but you can actually go onto that. You can walk past this seal and go down this bridge and there's stuff to get over there. There's a merchant to talk to. Um, there's a couple items to pick up. So keep that in mind. For the purposes of this guide, we're not actually going to go inside Ray of the Karia. We're just using this as a shortcut. But if you grab this set of grace, you can easily come back here later and explore Ray of the Karia yourself. And so we're going to take that seal. But first, I just want to point out, again, this bridge you can also go across. And you see at the very end of it, there's a golden seed you should pick up. So make sure you grab that before you leave this area. And after that, we're just going to head over to this eastern seal. And you can take it on foot, walk up to it, hit examine seal and it'll teleport you all the way across to the other end of the bridge to the Bellum Highway at the north end of Liurnia. There's a site of grace right next to where you come out, so make sure you grab it. And then from here, before we head up the highway, so that takes us all the way up to the Grand Lift of Dectus, before we head up the highway, we're instead going to make another detour real quick and drop down to the south over here. So you see this orange hole? That's the Rayu Lucaria Crystal Tunnel, which has a really important item in it that we're going to want to grab. So there's a shortcut that we can use to get down there instead of having to run all the way across the lake. So we're up on top of this big cliff. Be careful not to fall. There's a lower cliff here that I just dropped down onto. So there's two ways to get down from here. You can either A, jump down those tombstones you see over there. Wherever you see tombstones on a cliff, that's a shortcut down the cliff if you want to use it. Or B, you can use the spirit stream that's down there. So if you're on torrent, you can jump down into it. And when you land in or close enough to the spirit stream, uh, you don't take any damage from the fall. So that's what I like to do. And then from there, we're just going to head over to the tunnel. This tunnel is filled with these miner guys, and their skin is made out of stone. So they're resistant to swords and stuff like that, but they're really weak to strike damage, and they're also really weak to elemental damage, like fire damage. So having the Morning Star, which is a strike weapon, and also having fire pots is really useful against these guys. So if you're having any trouble in here, make sure you use those. There's a whole bunch of smithing stones in here. The main ones that you want are the smithing stone threes, like this one that I just grabbed over here. So keep an eye out for them. I think there's a total of eight smithing stone threes. So in order to bring a weapon up to plus nine, you need a total of 12 smithing stone threes. So between the seven that we picked up outside in Laernia and the eight that we can get here, um, you should be able to fully upgrade one weapon all the way up to plus nine. This video is already long as shit as it is, so I didn't want to provide a full detailed walkthrough, but you can see where I'm going here if you want to slow the video down to like 0.5 speed, or I think I have this sped up to four times, so if you put the video on 0.25 uh, playback speed, then you should be able to see all this stuff. So like here's a little secret area that you can get to, um, be careful of the wall here. If you try to just walk off while hugging the wall, then it'll slide you off and you'll uh, fall into the pit and die. So you have to do it from like the corner of the cliff there. But yeah, make sure you grab this shortcut. I had a note about it just a second ago, but make sure you grab this shortcut. I've seen a lot of people miss it. And if you die to the boss down here, it saves you a lot of running through that first section of the tunnel. So make sure you grab it. Past the shortcut, this tunnel gets significantly more difficult. So first, in this area, there's a bunch of marionette soldiers. They're made out of wood, so they're pretty weak to fire and they're also weak to strike damage. But fire is definitely your go-to. And you saw like those ones that were hanging up there, they don't actually aggro until you get close enough to them or you attack them. In this room, there's a ambush one uh, on your right, and there's also one hanging from the ceiling there on your right too. So be careful if you go into that room. But there's no smithing stones in there, so I didn't go in there. Over here, the fire pots are really effective against that group of miners that were there. And then you can just clean up the rest of them with the hammer. 
There's a spell over here, Shatter Earth. And there's a bunch of smithing stones, so make sure you grab them. And then finally, we come to the final elevator. There's one more secret over here that has a smithing stone. A uh, somber stone three, I should say. And finally, we come to the boss, which I am going to walk you through. So this boss is a single ring blade crystallion, and they're really easy. This is the main reason why we grabbed a strike weapon. So you saw, it has some pretty long attack animations, and if you dodge them, it's pretty easy to get behind it and hit it with a backstab. And then after the backstab, you can wake it up with a charged R2, and then hit it with another charged R2, and that gives it a stance break. Now that you've broken its stance, it'll be weak to all forms of damage, and it'll get stunned by pretty much any hit, including even something like a throwing knives or fan daggers. When you break its stance for the first time, it gets all cracked and fucked up looking, so that's how you know that this thing is set to easy mode now. And so after that, you just wail on it with whatever you want. If you don't hit it with that first stance break, then it's resistant to all forms of damage except for strike, which is why it feels like it takes so long to kill these things. But like you see here, like I'm hitting it with a sacred seal, like something that's not even intended to be a melee weapon, and it's so weak that it gets stunned by the sacred seal. Now, for other enemies, if you hit them, it does stance damage to them, or you can also call it poise damage, but it does stance damage to them, and then if you go a few seconds without hitting them, their stance health will regenerate, and so you have to start over from square one. With this enemy, its stance health never regenerates, so if you need to take five minutes in between hits because you're, you know, uh, afraid to get hit by it, you need to dodge its attacks or whatever, you don't ever have to worry about its stance health regenerating and you just need to do a total of 70 stance damage to break its stance the first time. And after that, it's super easy. When you kill it, it drops a smithing stone miner's bell bearing number one. So we can turn that in to the twin maiden husks at the round table hold. So you go to them, hit offer bell bearing. I can't do it because I'm on new game plus, and so I already have it active, but you'll be able to give it to them. And then if you go to purchase, you can head over to the bolstering material section, and you'll be able to buy infinite smithing stone ones and smithing stone twos. So you can now upgrade any weapon up to plus six, as long as you have the runes for it. In addition to that, we also picked up all those smithing stone threes. So I'm going to use them to upgrade the Ansper Rapier. We haven't grabbed this yet, but hold on to your smithing stone threes so that you can upgrade this Rapier later on. Feel free to use those smithing stone ones and twos to upgrade all your other weapons up to at least plus six. So for example, that shield, we're going to need the shield in a little bit. So make sure you upgrade that to plus six. But hold on to the smithing stone threes. Don't go to plus 7, plus 8, or plus 9. So now we're back on the Bellum Highway. First, we're going to head up to the Bellum Church, where there's a sacred tier we can grab. If it's nighttime, there will be a Knight's Cavalry over here, so be careful of him, because he's pretty tough. But you can just follow through the woods, and then come to the church. There's a Sight of Grace, make sure you grab it. Grab the sacred tier underneath the Radagon statue. And now we're going to head north up the highway over to the Grand Lift of Dectus. So on the highway, there's a whole bunch of fortifications with a bunch of enemies, and there's also trebuchets that'll shoot at you as you're trying to come up to it. So we need to stick to one of the sides in order to avoid getting shot by the trebuchets. So we're going to hug this cliff over here and make sure we don't get shot by the trebuchets. Watch your step and be careful not to fall, obviously. But as long as you stay reasonably close to the cliff, then you won't be shot at by the trebuchets, and so you can just run past the whole fortification. At the end of the highway is the Grand Lift of Dectus. Make sure you grab the Sight of Grace that's there. And then you can stand on this platform and hoist the Dectus Medallion, and that'll take us up to the Altus Plateau. You'll see there are two golems over here that are guarding the lift. They won't attack you if you have taken the lift at least once, so you don't have to worry about them. So if you head to the north, there's a Sight of Grace over here. So we're going to grab it, and we're going to rest at this Sight of Grace. Make sure you rest at it, because that's what triggers the Radon Festival. So, we're gonna go to Radon in a little bit, but there's a few things we need to grab up in the Altus Plateau first. So first, if you follow the road, you'll probably be able to see it uh, through the Fog of War on your map before you grab the map marker. Up the road, just north of the fork, so you can see this fork here. Right next to it, there's the Altus Highway Junction side of Grace, so that's on this little platform here. You can see it in between all those trees. I didn't bother to actually grab it here, but obviously you should. And then if you keep following the road to the north, you can grab the map of the area here, and there was also a golden seed behind me in between the map and the Site of Grace, so make sure you grab that. Then we're going to head further north up the road, and that'll take us to this broken bridge. This guy sells a bunch of stone sword keys, so if you need them, make sure you grab them. And then he sells this cookbook, which unlocks the recipe for lightning pots. Obviously, lightning pots are just like fire pots, but instead of fire damage, they do lightning damage. Instead of using smoldering butterflies to craft, they require Fulgur Bloom to craft. 
And so you remember we ran into that Fulgur Bloom patch earlier? Well, there's a whole bunch of Fulgur Bloom patches, and there's a bunch of them that are a lot easier to farm than the Smoldering Butterflies. So if you want easy pots that you can use to, you know, attack just any regular enemy you come across, it's really good to use Lightning Pots. Um, you can easily just farm a whole shitload of Fulgur Bloom and then use that for that purpose. Since we're so close to the Erd Tree, there are a ton of Golden Seeds in this area. I have a whole guide about how to max out your flasks as quickly as possible, so if you find yourself running out of flasks a lot, I suggest you check that out. Speaking of flasks, we're going to head over to the west, and we're going to go to the Second Church of America here. You can see the outline on the map. We're going to head over to that building for another sacred tier. So you can just drop down on the cliff here, from the side of the road. There's a whole bunch of enemies around here, so there's these dogs. I believe they're called blistered dogs, and they do a uh, bleed build up on hit. And there's like a bunch of them, so be careful. Um, I'm just going to run past them real quick. There's also an enemy that spawns inside the church, a Sanguine Noble, and he's pretty tough, so be careful. But you can just run up, grab the tier, and then just fucking dip, and, uh, you know, you'll be fine. Now I headed back to the Altus Plateau site of Grace, and we're gonna head north of that up to the Lux Ruins. So for this, you're gonna need a ranged option of some kind, so I went with Fire Pots. You could also use a bow or spells or whatever you have. So in the Lux Ruins, there's a Scarab over here. If you get too close to it, or if you attack it without killing it, it teleports away, and I don't think this one actually appears somewhere else. You have to reload the area to get it to respawn. So, instead of going to a set of grace and coming back, I just quit out, and that reloads the area when you load back in. And then, uh, you know, I put a strength talisman on so my fire pots do a bit more damage, and that made sure it died, and it drops the shield crash Ash of War, which we're going to put on our spiked palisade shield. Just to the east, you'll see there's a golden seed over there, and there's also a set of grace down here called the Erd Tree Gazing Hill. So make sure you grab these. After this, we're going to head a little bit to the east, which you're going to see in a second, and then we're going to follow a path north up to the Shaded Castle. So we grabbed the map earlier so that you could see this. So here's the Archery Gazing Hill. If you head to the east of it, there's this valley. First, there's a Scarab that we're going to kill over here that drops an Ash of War that we're going to use against Radon. And then if you head further north, there's the Shaded Castle. So that's our objective right now. This camp over here has a couple pretty good items in it, but it's guarded by a bunch of ballistas, so if you're in the lower part of the camp, the ballistas will shoot you, so be careful of them. And then once you head over to this uh, burned or death bladed area over here, there's a floating scarab, and when you kill it, it drops the blood blade ash of war. From here, we're going to head north up to the Shaded Castle. There's a couple trolls and a bunch of wraith callers along the way, so be careful of them. But once you get over to this area, there's pretty much nothing except for some slugs. We're going to head up onto the rampart of the castle and grab the Sight of Grace in case we die to the NPC we're going to fight over here. On the Spiked Palisade Shield, make sure you equip the Shield Crash Ash of War. Not Shield Bash, Shield Crash. If you went into Rayo Lucaria, you could have gotten the Glintstone Wet Blade, and that would allow you to put the Cold Infusion on this. With the Cold Infusion, you would lose a little bit of bleed buildup, but you would get a bunch of Frostbite buildup, which could make this a lot easier. But uh, I'm going to assume that you didn't do that, and it's really not necessary, so I'm just going to use the Standard Infusion. And obviously, based on your stats, you might want to use Heavy, Keen, or Quality instead, but I just went with Standard because it's all I need. So remember, you need 20 strength to use this thing, so make sure you either have a Talisman equipped, or you have that Wondrous Physic, or you're two-handing the shield. And then with Shield Crash, you can either tap all two to do a short hit like that, that hits I think three times, or if you hold down L2, you do a longer hit that can hit an enemy up to five times. So that's what we're going to be using. There's an NPC to the west of the Shaded Castle. We're going to use the shield with Shield Crash to stun lock her and build bleed up on her real quick because it hits five times in a row, and that's going to make it really easy to kill her. So there she is, Mally Murray. Behind her, there's a golem that's going to get up as you approach, so you're going to want to lead her back away from the golem before it attacks you. The golem is really slow, and it's not a bow guy, so you shouldn't have any trouble killing her before it gets over to you. So I like to lead her over here to where these rocks are, and you just hold down L2, and she can't fucking do anything about it. As long as you have the FP and the stamina, she's pretty much completely helpless against this. And you see, every few hits, it's going to cause a bleed on her that's going to take off a big chunk of her health. So I haven't even upgraded the shield at all, and it's just doing a ton of damage to her that she's pretty much helpless against. It's even better if you get her up against a wall, because then that'll lock her in place, and she won't be able to dodge or go anywhere. Like this. Just be careful about uh, watching your stamina, because sometimes she can get up and hit you. Oh, and there's also the golem there, so be careful of him too. 
but sometimes she can get up and hit you, and if your stamina's low, it'll do a stance break on you, and that'll probably kill you. But so when she dies, she drops the Ansper Rapier, so make sure you upgrade that up to plus 9 using the smithing stones that we grabbed. Now we're going to head over to the third Church of Merica. Just north of it, there's these cliffs here with these spirit streams that you can take up, and we're going to head east into Kaelid. So we're going to start heading towards Redmain Castle, which is where Radon is located, and there's also a couple items we need to grab in Kaelid too. I just want to point out, there is a church to our northwest right now, but that doesn't have a sacred tier in it, which is why I didn't go to it. There are a couple crafting recipes there, though. But anyway, so we need to go to the southeast end of Kaelid to get to Redmain Castle. Kaelid is a pretty hostile area, but this isn't scaled to the same level as the Dragon Barrow that we were at before. So it should be easier than the Dragon Barrow, and you shouldn't really have a hard time running past all the enemies and stuff here. So we're at the Rotview Balcony. You're supposed to follow the road north around the Forsaken Ruins, because there's a cliff here that we can't go down. You're supposed to follow the road north, and then there's a bunch of giant dogs and stuff over there that you need to run past or fight. But instead, if you just head to the south, there's this little ledge that you can jump up. And then this is a shortcut directly to Fort Gale. So make sure you grab a set of grace here as a checkpoint to have in case you manage to die. And then from Fort Gale, we're going to head to the east and get on the road. You probably don't have the map of the area at this point because it's down at the south end, just next to Redman Castle, but we'll be grabbing that in a minute. It was at that little triangle thing that I showed on the map a second ago. So a little bit south of where you come out onto the road, you should be able to find a set of grace there. There's a merchant next to it. He sells poison bone darts, which are nice to have. Uh, he sells an infinite supply of them, so you can stock up on them from here. And then we're going to head east into the swamp of Aeonia, and a little bit further to the south, there's this scarab over here, and again, this one teleports away if you uh, get too close to it or if you attack it. Though this one, you can actually kill when it teleports. So you see it teleported over here. So I'm trying to hit it with a lightning pot because it's raining and the lightning does uh, extra damage in the rain. And when you kill the scarab, it drops the poisonous mist ash of war, which is what we're going to put on the ant spray rapier. After that, we're just going to keep heading south through the swamp. Once we come up onto the shore, there's a site of grace in this mushroom woods over here. If you don't find it, it's not a huge deal. But, uh... Just south of this is the road. There's a merchant over here. He sells some good stuff. Here's where the map would be. From this fork in the road where we grab the map, we're going to head south to the Impassable Great Bridge. There's a bunch of enemies along the way, and there's also a golden seed, so be careful of them, especially these giant birds. They'll fuck you up. Then make sure you grab the golden seed, and then head further south through the camp. The soldiers are fighting uh, giant dogs, so you should be able to run past them without too much issue. If you activated the Radon Festival by resting at a Site of Grace in the Altus Plateau, then this teleporter will be active, and it'll take you across the bridge all the way into Redmain Castle itself. If this teleporter isn't active, then you have to cross the bridge, and there's a bunch of trebuchets and stuff that'll shoot at you while you're trying to cross the bridge. And when you get to the castle, you also won't be able to fight Radon. But anyway, so that teleporter took us inside the castle, head up the stairs to the north and grab the Site of Grace. So now we're going to prepare for the Radon fight. So in my Wondrous Physic, I use the Crimson Burst Crystal tier for the Health Regen, and I use the Dexterity Crystal tier to increase my dex by 10 and make sure that I can wield the Ansper Rapier, which requires 20 dex to wield. If you don't need that, then you could use something like the Strength tier. There's also other tiers you can get, like the Flame Shrouding tier. Um, Radon is weak to fire, so if you use the Flame Shrouding tier and you throw Fire Pots at him, then, uh, you know, that makes it even more effective to kill him. There's also the Winged Crystal Tier, which I think is my favorite crystal tier in the game. So this tree here is where you get the Flame Shrouding Tier. Um, there's an Urtree Avatar you need to kill, and it also does Scarlet Rot, so it can be kind of tough, but it's not too hard, especially if you use Fire. And then up in the Altus Plateau, in the capital outskirts, there's a minor Urtree. And underneath that Urtree, there is a basin that has the Winged Crystal Tier in it. So here on the map is where there's a couple sites of grace. Um, there's one at the Merchant Shack, and there's one uh, just south of it, too. But the Winged Crystal tier puts you into Light Rolls, which are uh, a lot better than Medium Rolls, for 3 minutes. Um, but yeah, I definitely recommend at least the uh, Health Regen tier, because it's just really good to have. Um, it's like 7 health per second for 3 minutes, so it's a ton of health that it restores. We're going to be using the Antsper Rapier for this fight, and we're going to put Poisonous Mist on it with a Poison Infusion. Um, you should also use those smithing stones we grabbed to upgrade it to plus 9. I didn't upgrade mine because I want to show you how effective this method is, but make sure you upgrade your rapier. And then I have two daggers, so one of them is for Golden Vow, uh, which is a buff that we're going to cast before the fight, and the other one has Blood Blade with a Blood Infusion on it. You can put Golden Vow on any weapon, I just like a dagger because it's light. 
and you can put Blood Blade on weapons like daggers, straight swords, katanas, I think. Now, as for the talismans, I only used one, which is the green turtle talisman, because I assume at this point you don't have all four of your talisman slots yet, right? This is a beginner-oriented guide, so you probably haven't gotten to that point in the game yet. If you don't want to use the green turtle talisman, then you can go to Celia Town of Sorcery and grab the Spelldrake Talisman plus one, which increases your magic resistance, which is useful against Radon because he does a bunch of magic attacks. After we talk to Jaren, we can head down to the beach. My loadout is the Antsprue Rapier with a Poison Affinity and the Poisonous Mist Ash of War on it. We're going to use that to proc Scholar Rot and Poison on Radon. Also in my right hand is a dagger with the Blood Blade Ash of War and a Blood Affinity, so we're going to use that to cause bleed buildup on Radon. And then in my left hand, I have another dagger, or you can use any weapon you want, with a Golden Vow on it. We're going to use Golden Vow to buff ourselves before the fight. It gives us an increase to our damage and to our damage negations. So you see, I have it in my left hand. If I want to use it, I can hold down Y or Triangle and hit L1, and that two hands the dagger, and now I can cast Golden Vow and then switch back to the rapier or the other dagger if I want to. Now it's time to start the actual fight. So you take the teleporter, as soon as you spawn in, you want to turn around, start sprinting backwards, and summon Torrent, and run away from Radon. If you do it fast enough, then he won't be able to get an arrow off at you, and then he'll despawn because he's too far away from you. I like to run up to that dune there, because sometimes if you don't go far enough, then this doesn't work. But essentially what we're going to do is, instead of us running up to him while he shoots arrows at us, despawning him like this causes him to want to run to us instead. So that gives us time to cast our buffs. So I drank my Wanderer's Physic, and I'm going to cast Golden Vow. And then once he approaches, he usually does this attack, so you can dodge underneath him, and then you can hit him with Poisonous Mist. That buffs the Rapier with extra poison buildup. And the Poisonous Mist itself will also do Poison build up on Radon. Then you pretty much just want to stay underneath him and hit him with the Rapier until he has both Poison and Rot on him. He doesn't hit super hard, but he can hit pretty hard, so it's important that you have a good amount of Vigor for this fight. I recommend at least 25 minimum, preferably 30 to 40. Most of his attacks are pretty well choreographed. If you get one like this, then that's really good as long as you stay on his right side. So you saw there, he hit me on the left. When he does that attack, you want to stay on his right side and wail on him until he has the Scarlet Rot. Speaking of which, you'll see he's got the red rot mist particles coming off of him. So that's how I know he has Scarlet Rot. And now I'm going to switch over to that Blood Blade Dagger and I'm going to attack him with Blood Blade. So if you stay underneath him, if you're close enough to him, not only will the Blood Blade projectile do bleed build up on him, but the dagger itself will also hit him and cause bleed buildup. Once he gets down to 75% health, he's going to do this attack. It's called Crag Bleed, and he follows it up by doing Starcaller Cry. So if you dodge the Starcaller Cry, you can get behind him and get a few free hits in while he does the follow-up explosion attack. I can't really describe how I dodge this attack. I just kind of know the timing of it. He does a stomp and then he brings the weapons together for a, like a second or two. And then when he pulls them apart, that's when you're supposed to dodge. So getting the timing down on that might take you some time, but it's not very hard once you get it down. And then I get underneath him and you can only hit him with a couple attacks before he does the follow up. So make sure you're not mindlessly mashing the attack button. Only hit him once or twice and then get ready to dodge. So here it is one more time. So he does a stomp, brings the weapons together, and then like a moment after he brings the weapons together, that's when I dodge. And then he's about to do the follow-up, so I hit him a couple times. And then if you watch his left leg, you see he's about to do a stomp, and then a moment after that, that's when I dodge. I think you can also just fully dodge this uh, area of this attack if you're by the horse's ass, and you can keep hitting the horse's ass while he does the attack. Here I just want to hammer in the point, so afterwards I have an opening to attack him a couple times. I only hit him like twice and then I get ready to dodge, because he's going to do an attack like that, and I know that if I'm in the middle of an animation, then I'm not going to be able to dodge the attack and I'm going to get owned. So the goal here is to get him to transition to phase 2. He transitions to phase 2 at 50% health. So the Scarlet Rot will damage him for about 16% of his max health, and the Poison will damage him for about 8% of his max health. So that'll bring him down to 75% on its own. 
And then while those are draining his health, we're attacking him with the weapons and we're hitting him with bleed buildup, and that causes his health to drop even further, making it really easy to get him down to 50% health. So at 50% health, he does this transition where he jumps up into the sky. So what you're going to want to do is get on Torrent and just stay still. He spawns in as a meteor coming down at you in the direction that you're facing. So if you're running around the map, then you don't know where he's going to come in from. So stay still and wait for him to appear and then just run off to the side. For phase two, we're going to use the summon signs around the arena to summon in NPCs to help us. He's still got the Scarlet Rot going. I think it lasts for 90 seconds. So he's still got the Scarlet Rot going for at least a little while. It just ran out now. So while that's happening, I'm summoning the NPCs. And then once I have all the NPCs summoned, I'm going to focus on letting them beat him up and I'm going to hit him with Scarlet Rot again. You saw there I got hit by a Starcolor Cry because you can't dodge while you're on Torrent. So I strongly recommend staying off Torrent for this fight unless you're running away or summoning NPCs. So when I go back to re-engage him, I hit him with Poisonous Mist, so now he's poisoned, and then I'm gonna try not to die here, and in the meantime I'm gonna try to hit him with the Rapier to proc Scarlet Rod on him again. It should only take like 6 or 7 hits to proc either of these things, because he has really low poison and rot resistance. Here you're gonna see him do a really tough attack to dodge, so he like leans down against the ground and then he rears back and does a roar. It didn't make any audio here, but I'm pretty confident it normally has the sound of him doing his roar sound. So he runs away from you, he does that, and then he's gonna put his swords together in like an X formation, and he shoots all his meteors at you. So in this case, I managed to survive it just by getting knocked off torrent, because once you're on the ground like that, you get a few invulnerability frames for a little bit. So that's how I survived it. Honestly, I have no clue how to actually dodge that attack, and that's fine, you don't have to be a perfect player at this game. That's why you can level up your health and make sure that you can survive taking hits like that. So make sure you have enough vigor for this boss fight, and for every boss fight for that matter. And here you see I'm running away from him because I'm just afraid of getting owned. Um, I think I hit him with a fire pot here, yeah. So he's really weak to fire, so hitting him with fire pots is always a good idea. But so now that's how we killed Radon. And now a cutscene is going to play where we're going to see a shooting star crash into the ground somewhere in Limgrave. So where that meteor fell is where we need to go to get the Mimic tier. But I also want to show you how to upgrade the Mimic tier, so there's one more thing that we got to do before we go down there. In order to leave Radon's arena, you need to activate the Sight of Grace, and then that lets you fast travel out. But there's also a little glowing white dot teleporter thing that'll take you back to the entrance, like what you see uh, when you complete a cave or something like that. And that'll take you back into Redmain Castle. If you go and talk to Jaren, then that'll take the castle out of festival mode, and you can grab more items there, and there's also another boss fight to do there. But it'll also be filled with enemies, so be careful of that. Anyway, so here's the crater. It's right next to Fort Height, so that's why we made sure to grab the Sight of Grace for Fort Height earlier. Now we need to head up to Caria Manor on the northwest end of Liernia, so we're going to go back to that Sight of Grace we grabbed on the west side of Liernia. Follow the road north, and you'll come to the King's Realm Ruins. This archway here has an illusory wall in it, so you need to hit it with something, and then that makes it disappear, and you can pass through it. There's a Sight of Grace, and next to it, there's also EG. Um, he's a blacksmith, so he can upgrade your weapons for you, and he also sells a bunch of somber smithing stones if you have a somber weapon. But anyway, so head up the road up to Caria Manor. Make sure you grab the Sight of Grace outside, because there's these giant hands inside the manor uh, that'll kick your ass. So, you know... Grab the Sight of Grace in case you die, be careful not to get owned, and we're just running through the manor to get up to Ronnie as quickly as possible. I have a whole guide about Ronnie's questline if you want to check that out, but for the sake of this guide, we're just doing the very first part of it. There's some goodies to pick up here, so I was looking down at the ramparts there. There's also a building down there. Um, there's the Sword of Night and Flame, and there's the Arumi Whip, uh, if you want to check those out. And you can get those from jumping down from on top of that uh, bridge that we were just on. There's an upcoming boss fight with Royal Knight Loretta, so she's weak to lightning, so I figured I would use lightning pots, but they didn't end up being very useful for me. Maybe if you have a higher deck skill and you're not on New Game Plus 2, um, they'll be more effective against her, but for me they didn't really work out all that well. And then I tried using the Morning Star at the beginning of this fight, but I got owned and that's why you saw there was a cut there. So instead I pulled out the Lance, which we grabbed way back at the beginning of this guide, and I put Impaling Thrust on it, which I believe I said you can get from Warmaster Brunal at the Warmaster's Shack. So not only is Loretta weak to pierce damage, which is what the Lance does because it's a great spear, but 
She's also only got, I think, 80 poise. And so Impaling Thrust on the Lance does 33 poise damage. So you only have to hit her with it three times to break her stance, which is what I'm doing here. As you can see, she obviously casts a lot of spells that do magic damage. So if you had the Spell Drake Talisman that I mentioned earlier, that's helpful against her. You can also get Magic Proof Dried Livers, or you can get the Magic Fortification spell from Brother Corin in the Round Table Hold, uh, which is an incantation that requires 10 faith to cast. All of those things increase your magic resistance, which will make surviving this fight a lot easier. But really, she's pretty easy. Um, if you're going to use lightning damage, you should try keeping her in the pool, because that reduces her lightning resistance by 10%, meaning that your lightning attacks will do more damage to her if she's in the water. And if it's raining, that's even better, because that stacks with the pool as well. In a second here, I'm about to get a stance break on her. And so you don't get to repost her. You saw when I rolled, it hit her and it knocked her out of her uh, stance break. That happened because I have a piece of the Briar armor set on, which makes your rolls do damage. But if you don't have that on, you don't have to worry about it. Um, you can't get a repost on her, but you can do like, um, you know, hit her with an Ash of War or hit her with a Charged R2. So that's what I would have done there. And I think, uh, you know, I'm going to get more stance breaks in this fight and I'll probably get uh, Charged R2s off on her. I don't want this video to be any longer than it has to be, so I'm going to speed up through the rest of this fight. But it's pretty self-explanatory, really. Just dodge when she swings her attack, dodge the magic, which is much less hard than it looks, uh, and then, you know, just hit her with the impaling thrusts. Once she's dead, she drops Loretta's Bow, which is a spell, and she drops Loretta's Slash, which is an Ash of War, and then you can head up into the Three Sisters, and the middle sister, which is this tower up here, is Ronnie's Rise, so that's where we need to go. So there's a set of grace inside it, make sure you grab it. Take the elevator up, do not send the elevator back down yet, because I'm going to show you a little, little pro tip that I like to do whenever I have to talk to Ronnie. So come up to her, talk to her, agree to enter her service. And she'll tell you that she wants you to go and talk to her guys downstairs. So what you do is you start the elevator down, and then you walk off it. You won't take fall damage. And then you roll through the hole in the floor before the elevator gets there. And now you're all the way on the bottom floor, so you can talk to Celevis here. And then there would be Blythe here, but we already killed Radon, so he's not there. And then you can talk to EG. And now that saves you the time of running all the way down and then all the way back up, because you just need to go up. And then when you take the elevator back up, now I like to send it back down so that when we come back here later, it's already in position for us so that we can just take it straight up to Ronnie. Now that we've talked to Ronnie, we can head back to the Starfall Crater and go down into the city of Nakron. So be careful when you go down into the crater and then be careful of the falls here. Like, especially in this spot, you can easily fall off this if you miss time and jump. In this room, there's a Ghost Glove Wart 3, so make sure you grab that, because we're going to need it to upgrade the Mimic tier. Then grab the Grace, and just outside of it, there's this gazebo with the Ghost Glove Wart Pickers Bell Bearing 1. So that, when you turn it into the Twin Maiden Husks at the Round Table Hold, that allows you to buy infinite Ghost Glove Warts 1 and 2. So with those two items that we just picked up, we can get Ghost Glove Warts 1, 2, and 3 to upgrade the Mimic tier up to plus 3 right off the bat as soon as we get it. This arena is where we're going to fight a Mimic tier. This isn't where we actually get the Mimic tier, but we do need to kill a Mimic tier here. So if you want to cheese this fight, just take off all your equipment. You can leave your arrows and stuff equipped, but remove all your armor, weapons, talismans, and items. You can hide the right side of the menu by clicking right stick twice. So you can walk up to the Mimic tier, and you know, you can see what you're doing. And then once it spawns in, wait for it to finish spawning in fully once it starts moving. Like that, now it's done. Then you can equip all your items back again. Since we didn't close the equipment menu, then when you select a slot, like for your pants or for your weapon or whatever, whatever was just taken out of that slot will already be selected. So you don't have to go, you know, digging through your menus to find the items and stuff that you want to equip. And then 
The Mimic tier is naked and unarmed, so it can do barely any damage, and it has no damage resistance. So I just murdered it with the shield crash, but you can kill it with your bare fist if you want. Uh, you know, that's your prerogative. Once it's dead, grab the Sight of Grace, and we're going to head across this aqueduct. On our left there, that's Nakron. That's where we need to go. So we're going to come down through the Ancestor's Woods, and we're going to make a left over here, grab the Sight of Grace. And from here, it's just a short run through Nakron. Just be careful not to fall. There's a bunch of jumps here that you got to make. There's a couple silver tiers here. They're actually pretty tough, but you can just run past them really easily. And then after you cross over the archway, this corpse has the black wet blade on it. So that allows you to infuse your weapons with uh, blood and poison and the occult infusion. So make sure you pick that up because it's really important. You're also going to need a stone sword key here to be able to get the mimic tier. So make sure you have at least one stone sword key. That scarab doesn't drop anything. It just refills your flasks. But in this room, you see there's an imp seal. Use that. Bada bang, bada boom. Open that bad boy up. So there's a single Nox Swordstress here guarding this chest. Um, she kind of kicked my ass a little bit. Um, that's why there's a cut there because I had died and I had to come back. But um, she shouldn't be too hard. Uh, you know, I also haven't upgraded my weapons at all, so I'm doing terrible damage. But like you see, I'm going to whip out the shield. Uh, and when I block her attacks, her sword is going to bounce off of it like that. So that gives me the opportunity to do a guard counter on her. And guard counters do a lot of poise damage, so I'm going to get a stance break on her pretty easily, like that. So, you know, I'm doing terrible damage because I haven't upgraded my weapons, but you shouldn't have any problem killing her. And then once she's dead, open up the chest, and behold, the Mimic Tear. The Mimic Tear requires 600 health to summon, so it doesn't use FP like most other Spirit Ashes do. It requires your health, so you need to make sure you have enough vigor to be able to actually expend 600 health and summon it. But anyway, so now we want to work on upgrading the Mimic tier up to plus 10, so that's why we started Ronnie's quest line, because you can only open this chest once you have started Ronnie's quest line. So th that's the Finger Slayer Blade, it's part of Ronnie's quest line. Also in the chest is a great Ghost Glove Wart, which is going to be used to upgrade the Mimic tier to plus 10. And then you can just use this teleporter to get out of here, because I ran past all the enemies so I couldn't fast travel. Uh, once you start the teleporting animation, um, the enemies can't damage you. So we need Ghost Glove Warts 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and a Great Ghost Glove Wart. So we already picked up a 3. Then we got the Bell Bearing, which lets us buy infinite Ghost Glove Warts 1 and 2. Now remember, this is Ghost Glove Wart, not Grave Glove Wart. Those are two different things. So special ashes like, uh, you know, the Mimic Tier uh, require Ghost Glove Wart to upgrade. So that's what we need. So if you remember, back when we were in Shifra River, I told you to make sure you grab the Worshipper's Wood Set of Grace. So we're going to head just south of that, and you see there's this fallen pillar. You can see it on the map pretty easily. So we're going to jump up on top of this pillar, go past the archer, be careful not to get owned by him. And there's a teleporter up on top of this little ruin here, so we're going to take that. This teleporter takes us to an upper part of the Shifra River. And so we're going to head to the right over here. Across the way, you see there's a Dragonkin soldier over there. That's a boss. When you kill him, I think he drops a Dragon Halberd, which is a really solid weapon. Um, but we're not worried about that right now. Instead, we're going to drop down to this lower part of the upper part of the Schieffer River. And across the waterfall, so there's this humongous stream here with this big-ass waterfall. Across the stream, there is a Ghost Glove Art number 4. So make sure you grab that. Then, still in the same area, we're going to go back up the hill and head all the way over to the west side up here, so to this cliff over here. And there's a Ghost Glove Wart number 5 over here. Now we're going to head back to Ronnie, and we're going to give her the Finger Slayer Blade. So she'll give us the Carrion Inverted Statue. Um, that's for a different quest line. We're not worried about it right now. And then she will also tell us that she's going to leave. So in order to make her leave, we need to go rest at a Site of Grace. So I'm just going to drop down here. You could also just fast travel to the Site of Grace, or without even going to the Site of Grace, you could stay up in Ronnie's room and just quit out, and then when you load back in, it reloads the area and Ronnie will be gone. But I decided to come back down to the Site of Grace, just to make it a bit easier to follow what's going on. And then from here, I'm not even going to go back up to Ronnie, because she's gone, and there'll just be another Site of Grace up there. The Site of Grace, where she was, points you over to Rena's Rise, over here. And so this is now open, before it was closed, but now it's open. Um, 
climb up the ladder and, you know, little side thing, you can grab this chest, which has the Snow Witch set in it. And so you may recognize this as Ronnie's outfit. And then at the top of Renner's Rise, there is a teleporter, and that takes us over to the Einzel River Main. This area is also part of Ronnie's questline. If you're interested in her questline, make sure you grab the miniature Ronnie there. I go into more detail about her questline in my video about her questline, which I'm going to mention again because I can. But anyway, so grab the Sight of Grace, and then we're going to run through the river. Unfortunately, we can't use Torrent here. So there's this big Estelle thing that's going to shoot rocks at us. You can take cover behind these walls while you move up. Um, it has a delay in between its shots. But over here in the corner, right next to it, there's a Ghost Glove Wart 6 and a Ghost Glove Wart 7. There's also another Ghost Glove Wart 7 over here uh, by those Claymen that were there. But so keep following the river, and that's going to take you down over here. And this is another 6. That takes us to Noxtella, so we're going to grab the Sight of Grace here. You can go up the stairs into the city itself, but that's not where we need to go right now, so I didn't bother. Uh, follow the stream, and on either side of it here, there's also a second one right over there. Um, these are two Ghost Glovewort number 8s. And then you're going to follow the stream further. Try not to get owned by the Nox and the Silver Tears and the Ants. And we're going to take this elevator down. There's a Sight of Grace here. And finally, right behind the side of Grace, there is a Ghost Glovewort number 9. So with all those collected, we have everything we need in order to upgrade the Mimic tier up to level 10. So you have to go back to the round table hold. You can talk to Roderica. She'll tell you that she, you know, wants to find some purpose or whatever. So you go talk to Hugh and ask him about Roderica. Then he'll tell you that she's special. So you go back to Roderica and talk to her about Hugh. And she'll ask you to go talk to Hugh for her. So you got to go talk to Hugh about Roderica and ask him to watch over her. And you got to say yes twice. And then now, after that, you don't need to talk to Roderica again. You can just rest at the side of Grace. She will then move from the fireplace and be over next to Hugh, sitting on the floor. And you can talk to her and she will upgrade your spirit ashes for you. So we gathered all the ghost glove words that we need in order to bring the mimic tier up to plus 10. Uh, in addition to that, you're going to need about 76,000 runes. And I just want to point out again that I have two different rune farming guides that you can follow in order to get those really easily. In addition to whatever else you might need runes for, be it leveling up or upgrading your weapons and stuff. And with the Mimic tier upgraded to 10, that concludes this guide. We've killed one boss, I think, just Radon. So, you know, you can use the Mimic tier for pretty much the entire game now. It's super strong, especially since it's upgraded to plus 10. You can make it do whatever you want because it just copies you. I might make a follow-up guide about a build that will make the Mimic tier super strong. But for now, just mess around with it and give it whatever you want because it's always going to be super strong. Upgrading it to plus 10 gives it a ton of health and a ton of damage by default no matter what it's using. So it's always going to be good if it's at plus 10. With that said, I hope you enjoy using it. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and that you found it helpful. Please consider leaving a like and subscribing, and I'll catch you later.